Hello everyone. Welcome to the part one of the hyperconjugation. In this series, we have total fifteen part. In part one, we are going to discuss about the little bit of the background of hyperconjugation, few history, little bit of some of the terms about the history of hyperconjugation, and then some of the things which organic chemistry teacher need to take care of. If students are directly watching, then students should be taking care of these few points. So, uh, in the background, we will be talking about uh, the development of conjugation that uh, leads to resonance or mesomeric effect in organic chemistry. We'll be talking about inductive effect, how it was uh, when it was developed, and then we should be coming to the main point: how this Baker-Nathan effect was discovered for the first time. And then this led to what we now recognize as hyperconjugation. So uh, it was the nineteen twenty seven to nineteen thirty when the idea of the conjugation and resonance was developed, and Heisenberg was the first person to talk about the resonance, and this was an analogy to the pendulum when this is undergoing. Oscillation leading to resonance, that kind of phenomenon. Linus Pauling applied to that idea of the resonance taking place in the molecules for the sake of stability. That was the beginning of the uh, resonance, and then we define these terms in order of the conjugation for certain molecules where electrons can be. Rather, electron densities can be delocalized over more than one particular atoms, and that we. Now consider as conjugation or such delocalization of charge is supposed to be leading to stability. The idea of inductive effect was developed in nineteen twenty-three to thirty-four. Ingold was one of the key person, and Robinson. This is the same Ingold who used to be the supervisor of John William Baker. The Foundation of the hyperconjugation came from what we call as hyperconjugation effect. So, that hyperconjugation was first of all uh, people started talking about this Baker-Nathan effect when they published one of their paper upon the rate of reactions for the para substituted benzyl halides. We'll be seeing that in detail later. Here we are having the idea how conjugation is brief idea will be just talking about here so in the first case we are talking about the conjugation taking place in the carbocation where there is a positive charge present over here and the electron density from this uh, double bond is being delocalized into this positive charge the the p orbital what is present and such kind of system we are calling as pi p conjugation same thing can happen in the free radicals where the unpaired electron present over here this one particular carbon having unpaired electron the pi electron density over here can be delocalized over here and this kind of delocalization can again take place this is we are calling as pi p conjugation please note the difference when there was a positive charge over here then both the electrons will be uh, delocalized from the pi bond to the positive charge when there is one singly bonded electron present over here in this radical then out of these two electrons which are there in the Uh, pi bond only one electron is being delocalized onto this empty p orbital another electron is just remaining onto this another orbital itself so this is delocalization of the electron pair this is the delocalization of the single electron but still we are calling this as pi p conjugation because the electrons involved in the pi bond are undergoing delocalization with some orbital which is having p character then we have got the cases of alkadienes where we have got one double bond there is a single bond and then there is another double bond these kind of systems are supposed to be considered as conjugated system and this pi bond and this pi bond are called to be in conjugation such thing we are calling as pi pi conjugation more such cases are actually possible we are just limiting our discussion to these three examples only so when we are uh, talking about conjugation what we are basically implying in most of the cases we are seeing there are alternating single and double bonds sometimes 
these double bonds may not be alternating as another double bond after the single bond sometimes there can be the double bond single bond positive charge it can be like here this was the case it was a double bond single bond and there was a positive charge in this case there was a double bond single bond and there was unpaired electron like that in this case there was a double bond single bond and another there was a double bond so such situations when they are arising we are considering this is the case of conjugation also we understand when unhybrid p orbitals are overlapping then the electron cloud what is there in the formation of the pi bond this electron cloud basically can be moving from high electron density to lower electron density wherever possible sometimes this electron density may not be less or more still delocalization of electron can be possible because this leads to overall stability like electron density can be delocalized over a greater three dimensional reason greater three dimensional space that spread of electron density what we are saying whenever we are having basically any conjugated system we will be finding there will be a greater delocalization of the charge density like electrons are present in the greater three dimensional space and that is what we consider as associated with the greater stability that is sometime we are calling as resonance or mesomeric effect or other terms can be there then we are uh, talking about in brief about the inductive effect Uh, this inductive effect is actually going to be a localized change in the electron density unlike the conjugation electrons were are not moving here from one place to another here electrons are confined like if you have got one carbon and another carbon say this kind of bond is present then these electrons are not moving away from this particular region if these are the two electrons present they are not moving from away from their valence bond or valence cell if you talk about valence bond theory the electron density is just being distributed uh, across this bond more towards one side let us say more towards this side that gets delta negative charge less towards this side this gets delta positive charge this is what happens in inductive effect this is a localized change in electron density and of course mostly we are talking about with respect to carbon carbon single bond and with this electron density delocalization ra rather this shifting of localized electron density is what we are calling as leading to some uh, these two kind of changes what we can recognize as the electron withdrawing nature or electron donating natures and this is also supposed to be related with the polarization and otherwise non polar bond we'll see an example and this is going to be permanent effect two examples we are going to see the first example is we have got a carbon carbon chain over here so this carbon carbon chain can be otherwise non polar if there is no such kind of group present there is no positive negative charges possible in these three carbons if there is no other atoms than carbon or hydrogen present but then as soon as we are having here some group present we have assumed that this group is having relatively higher electron higher electronegativity because if this group is having higher electronegativity this will be pulling electron if this is pulling electron from this benzene from this carbon carbon system then this whole system will become relatively less electron rich this becomes electron poor such a situation where electron density is decreasing it is getting minus we can think is considered as the negative inductive effect and technically we call that this particular group this group number x has negative inductive effect what we will be calling most of the times as minus i effect on the other hand there can be a possibility where this group z can be having a relatively lower electronegativity in comparison to the carbon carbon chain because this can be relatively more electropositive and if that's the case this will become now this becomes more electron rich this system now becomes relatively more electron rich if this becomes more electron rich then the inductive effect for this particular group y what we are saying this is supposed to be having plus i effect so the idea is due to presence of these groups group number x and group number z the electron density over this carbon chain is being changed and this is what we are considering as inductive effect 
comparing about the conjugation and hyperconjugation we understand when electrons are completely shifting completely delocalizing and these are supposed to be relatively loosely held electrons so when loosely held electrons are being delocalized this is going to be the electrons present in uh, p orbital electrons can be present in the pi orbital or electrons which can be present as lone pair sometimes the single electron present in some of the p orbital can also be shifting from one place to another from one atom to another that is considered to be the case of conjugation but then this is not the only case where delocalization of electronicity can be possible there can be more possibilities that, that there are more possible ways in which the delocalization of electron can be taking place other than those what we are talking about here and this thing where we are saying ki relatively tightly held electrons these are also being delocalized into some of the empty orbitals or sometimes the filled p orbitals sometimes we can see that with respect to the valence bond theory actually and the molecular orbital theory we can be seeing these electrons are being delocalized from some of the filled orbitals over to the some of the empty orbitals that's what's going to happen in the hyperconjugation in all the cases most of the cases these orbitals are empty they can be pi or they can be p orbital they can be pi star orbitals or they can be sigma star orbitals this kind of situation is uh, there in the hyperconjugation so conjugation is the delocalization of the relatively loosely held electrons and on the other hand hyperconjugation this thing is the delocalization of relatively tightly held electrons both of these are undergoing delocalization of those loosely held electrons undergoing delocalization the process we are calling as conjugation and when these are relatively tightly held electrons when these are undergoing delocalization we are considering this as the case of hyperconjugation that's how these two things can be compared and then we'll be talking about a brief history about hyperconjugation effect and basically this is all about baker nathan starting as the uh, first thing then this is about 1935 when uh, baker and nathan they had published their very first paper and this suggested a new effect should be there what we should be calling as baker nathan effect after their surnames then mulliken in 1941 uh, suggested that this as a kind of no bond resonance and he suggested for the first time that the term hyperconjugation should be used and we'll be talking about later that there, there can be some possible confusion in hyperconjugation what was his idea behind suggesting this term as hyperconjugation in comparison to or in correlation to conjugation we can see that and that that thing was not uh, not perfectly fine 1956 uh, uh, schubert and sweeney they suggested that what uh, baker and nathan were telling that is not actually any any different kind of effect they they just leveled it. this is going to be just a solvent effect because the observations were they had that this is happening only and only as long as solvents are present so they uh, decided to level this as the solvent effect rather than having any other name as the baker and nathan effect or something uh in 2020s uh, 2000 after 2000 basically uh, there have been uh, researchers who have suggested who have seen the haptic conjugation from altogether different perspective Mullins and Alabogin are one of those uh, people who have suggested that this is uh, going to be basically a delocalization effect and which is going to provide stability it can be modifying reactivity their calculations basis of the molecular orbital theory as well as computational chemistry which suggest hyperconjugation is going to be there and this is going to be present in a lot many molecules many of the applications we'll be exploring in the series which other than just the stability of carbocation and carbon and in the stability of alkenes there would be we'll be uh, talking about them in detail so uh, that is the um, brief history we'll be talking about some brief uh, idea of uh, molecan what he what he thought when he suggested this term hyperconjugation for the delocalization of electrons uh, what he was uh, think what he suggested is that when you have any group such as ch3 and when this is present along with the double or triple bond there can be a conjugation present so this earlier this idea was limited to the methyl groups only and this can be having the possibility of delocalization 
when this is present next to a carbon carbon double bond or a carbon carbon triple bond that is uh, what was observed by uh, 1941 and uh, this term when it was suggested by mulliken what he implied was this is going to be the conjugation other than what we usually recognize so when loosely held electrons undergoing delocalization from one atom to another atom using some of the p orbitals that was idea about the conjugation and in hyperconjugation what mulliken had suggested this is going to be some similar kind of conjugation where the delocalization can be taking place but this is not as what is uh, what people are, are able to recognize in most of the molecules some other molecules can also be having similar kind of delocalization possible and uh, this is going to be related with the uh, conjugating power will be basically different uh, uh, and for the saturated and unsaturated groups and this is going to be very much different when we are saying quantitative rather than qualitative we mean to say there is going to be quite uh, difference quite higher amount of difference in the unsaturated compounds in comparison to saturated compounds and that was in fact suggested by the calculations that haber conjugation is going to be very much important for explaining the uh, structure and, and possibly the stability of many such organic molecules because we understand this does modify the bond parameter which cannot be explained when we say bond parameter we are talking about basically the bond length mainly and bond energies in many of the cases we'll be saying the bond lengths and bond energies are going to be modified due to hyperconjugation if you don't apply hyperconjugation you possibly could not explain all those deviations or all those observations also we understand this pi conjugation as uh, basically this uh, what we call as baker nathan effect in, in the beginning we should uh, refer to this was mulliken's idea we should refer to this as the sigma conjugation rather than hyperconjugation most of the modern literature scientific literature actually doing that thing they have been doing that thing only in comparison to baker nathan effect but uh, nowadays actually the term hyperconjugation is of much more use in brief, we can talk about what the Schubert and Sweeney's objection was and what was their idea about this baker nathan effect. What they said, uh, they, they basically observed that if uh, on the same experiment what these baker and nathan had done, if they, they are doing this in gas space, that no such thing is happening what Baker and Nathan have reported in their 1935 paper in Journal of Chemical Society. So this gas phase reactions can be completely defined they can be completely explained on the basis of inductive effect when this thing was found by schubert and sweeney then they had enough valid point to say that this is happening due to presence of solvent and they simply labeled it as a solvent effect what they were saying when you have got some bulky groups then like you have t-butyl group on the para position then the solvent molecules are not able to approach the carbocation due to presence of the bulkier group solvation is not possible under these conditions when we are having bulkier group and if you have got some smaller group like methyl group then solvent can anyhow approach those things and they can stabilize so as long as solvent is present the role of bulkier group, bulkier group versus smaller group can be changing the course of reaction due to presence of the solvent which can be doing solvation easily for the smaller groups it could be difficult for the bigger groups that was the reason they suggested was the reason behind the difference in the activity and not this kind of conjugation alpha carbon hydrogen bonds were going to be delocalized this was schubert and sweeney's idea so what they concluded that cs hyperconjugation is a relatively less important as far as electron density or electron release is concerned and they said this is actually much less important than it is generally presumed so this is what they had labeled as the 
solvent effect. Basically, they disregarded the Baker-Nathan effect and they proposed this is going to be completely the solvent effect. Mullins and Alabohin, they have been uh, following hyperconjugation very extensively and both of these uh, chemists have the idea hyperconjugation is going to be very much coherent approach and this is going to be prevailing in most of the molecules than we might be thinking and this is going to be one of the good mode of the delocalization of the sigma bonded electron not just carbon hydrogen sigma bonds other sigma bonded electrons along with some of the pi bonds these electronic delocalization are also possible into the empty orbitals wherever available Halabugin was calling these effects as stereoelectronic effects and they said this is going to be uh, in involving the sigma as well as pi bonds depending upon the cases and this is going to modify the chemical reactivity and this is going to be among one of the most important chemical phenomena. Few of those examples we can take, we can have just a little bit idea about the versatile nature of the hyperconjugation, the ubiquitousness of the hyperconjugation we can see. So the interaction between the sigma orbitals and some of the empty orbitals that we now recognize as hyperconjugation. Uh, Alabogin, as Alabogin's claim is this has been actually has been receiving much less attention than it actually is supposed to be given. And in his own view, uh, as per Alabogin, this hyperconjugative stereoelectronic effects, what we consider as hyperconjugation, they are going to be, they, he said, they are going to be ubiquitous in chemistry. They are, they are, almost, they are prevailing in almost all the chapters. We will see uh, a couple of examples here and they are in almost all the parts of this hyperconjugation series. We can uh, take a break and we can talk about the definition of hyperconjugation. That was all about the history or the, the background basically of the hyperconjugation. Talking about the, de the definition, we have the power of the carbon hydrogen or carbon halogen bonds which can be present on some of the alkyl group and this can be in conjugation with this can be conjugated with the carbocations, free radicals or multiple bonds and this implies an additional conjugation which gives us a better delocalization of electron density over the molecule this thing happening we consider as the case of hyperconjugation basically the electrons which are present in the sigma bonds mostly sometimes these electrons can be present in the pi bonds and the lone pairs as well when they are being delocalized into the empty orbitals which can be of the suitable energy they can be of the uh, they can be present at suitable stereochemical in, in the stereoelectronic environment then this electronic transfer can be taking place and we can be seeing this kind of hyperconjugation is going to take place and sometimes we uh, have been seeing that hyperconjugation and baker nathan effect have been used synonymously uh, are they actually synonymous that uh, is uh, sometimes a question probably they are not because uh, this uh, baker nathan effect was limited in its application to very few examples very few cases we have used this baker nathan effect like this is the uh, highly electron demanding positions that they are present and alpha carbon hydrogen bonds can be delocalized that is the basic idea about the hyperconjugation starting from the carbocations to reactivity of the aldehyde and ketones number of other applications here is suggested like that but when we are saying hyperconjugation we are talking about the electronic delocalization in much greater detail and in today's time we are including this delocalization of the uh, carbon hydrogen single bonds carbon carbon single bonds carbon carbon double bonds as well as the lone pairs present on one particular atom like oxygen and nitrogen atoms their delocalization into suitable in empty molecular orbitals pi or pi star or sigma star molecular orbitals or pi star molecular orbitals we are recognizing as hyperconjugation so uh, the hyperconjugation is actually much more generic much more wider term which 
incorporates many such electron delocalization phenomenon which Bicker-Nathan effect uh, is usually not. Bicker-Nathan effect is having its very limited scope for the application. And this hyperconjugation basically will be effect explaining a uh, number of other observations rather than just the stability of a few molecules. Then we'll be uh, taking up a discussion to how hyperconjugation can be considered as no bound resonance as well. In this no bound resonance, if we see these structures, basically, uh, we, we are calling these structures as the delocali and the uh, hyperconjugating structures. In these hyperconjugating structures, we can see the one of the atoms is being detached. This hydrogen atom in hyperconjugating structure has been detached from the rest of the molecule. Here, this hydrogen atom has been detached from the rest of the molecule. When such things are happening in this hyperconjugation, we have uh, enough reason, we have enough reason to call this thing kind of no bond resonance because when this kind of thing is happening, we see there are no bond present between the atom and the rest of the molecule. And because this is happening just like resonance was happening, we are calling this thing as the no bond resonance because one of the atom is having its bond broken that atom is not having any bond present and the situation is like it was happening in the resonance the name no bond resonance appears to be valid in history we'll be talking uh, some brief biography of uh, baker and nathan they were the first people who talked about some effect other than the resonance and the inductive effect so John William Baker, uh, unfortunately we don't have any photograph of him. Uh, this is one of the book published by him. He was uh, he uh, received his PhD in from Imperial College and this was uh, under the Ingold, supervised by Ingold and uh, he had published more than, he actually uh, later became a reader, he had published more than 100 papers in different scientific journals and he had published more than a couple of uh, uh, books as well. One of the books we can see here, Introduction to the Organic Chemistry. He also had done work on tautomerism apart from the hyperconjugation. Terpenes was also his uh, idea of his uh, scope of the research. John William Baker. Then uh, the second person is the Wilfred Samuel Nathan. He was he also received his uh, uh, PhD from UK, 1910 to 1961. He worked with uh, John William Baker for one year. That it was nearly 1935 when they published that paper, that uh, breakthrough paper, we can say. And then later he joined the British Petroleum in 1986 and he continued over there after that. So that, that 1935 paper in which we are talking about the baker nathan effect, that was one of the key papers where this John William Baker and the Samuel Nathan had collaborated for the first time, probably for the last time they have been working. 1935 or near about that. Okay, uh, now we, we have got in, in baker nathan effect when we talk about what that effect was, how it was discovered. There is some simple reaction, basically nucleophilic substitution reaction where when alkyl halide is reacting with one of the amine. This is the type of reaction we recognize in the organic chemistry as a SN2 reaction. And if amine are reacted with the alkyl halides, then some of the alkynes are produced. And if this is the tertiary amine, we call this reaction as as Menschitkin reaction. And what uh, Baker and Nathan had done, they had taken some para substituted benzyl halide and they had reacted the pyridine uh, with these compounds. So in place of amine, they had taken pyridine. In place of alkyl halide, they had taken para substituted benzyl halide. Then they have published their results and the results were something which were supposed to be following of one particular order, but they actually have been uh, given some altogether different order. What they found, the, when the alkyl group is changed from hydrogen to methyl, ethyl, isopropyl, and T-butyl, then the results are quite weird. This is the reaction what they were doing, dry acetone to promote SN2 reaction, and nitrogen was attacking, this kind of product were forming. There was one CH2 group present here as well. 
there is one carbon basically so this kind of product being formed and here the idea was the expected order was supposed to be as per uh, electron if you apply the inductive effect then the vitel group having the maximum inductive effect was supposed to be facilitating the reaction but actual order was quite different this was a problem so this different order altogether was explained by nathan using this one of the effect what we call as baker nathan effect what he suggested this kind of order can be possible because the methyl group when it is present this can be involving its alpha carbon hydrogen bond which is present in para position this can be undergoing conjugation just like the other pi bonded electrons are also undergoing in conjugation so what they said they are not as much localized as we could have been anticipated basically they were saying that these electrons are undergoing delocalization so this accelerating effects of the alkyl group when are keeping on the para position or we can say their electron releasing nature when they are keeping these methyl or ethyl groups are kept in superior position this is increasing the rate of the uh, bromine going off as br minus and we are calling that sometimes as an ionization of the bromide ion so the departure of the bromide ion basically is being facilitated by these uh, alpha carbon hydrogen bonds we can represent that in this way that when you are having more number of hydrogen bonds then there can be better delocalization possible and if this is a better delocalization possible you can have better hyperconjugation uh, expected increase in the rate for the methyl over ethyl propeller dibutyl can be understood in this term that is how they suggested there are some different kind of effects some different kind of delocalization possible in the carbon hydrogen bonds so here you have three alpha hydrogen carbon hydrogen bonds there are three times delocalization possible two times possible one times possible no that kind of carbon hydrogen delocalization is possible here that is why there is a rate changing from methyl to t butyl also we can uh, see here how this conjugation is taking place as long as this br is going off there is a positive charge appearing over here in this carbon and as this positive charge is appearing this carbon can be pulling electron density from the benzene ring like this here positive charge develops positive charge can be then uh, pulling the electron from another pi bond and then if there is a positive charge coming on to this particular position over here this positive charge can be pulling these carbon hydrogen bonds from alpha position and this is what we are writing as delocalization in the hyperconjugation taking place once this happens we can be having this kind of situation hydrogen is departed br is also going off and you are having this kind of system possible that is how baker nathan effect is supposed to be taking place okay that is all in the history we now going to the some brief, some things actually uh, which we as a teacher should be taking care of or if we are our audience is a learner then we should be also taking care of when we are learning hyperconjugation then in what sequence we will be learning things if teachers are teaching then it is their responsibility then hyperconjugation should be a uh, thought in a process students should be finding it more easier to connect here are few suggestions from different academicians and chemists who are also involved in the teaching process the first thing is uh, like they, they ask a question can we uh, teach schrodinger equation well before teaching the bohr's theory to the students it is kind of very much obvious that if students don't understand what bohr's theory is how the electrons are present around the nucleus when they are present in first orbit second orbit how their energy are changing if you are not having any vague idea about that also schrodinger's equation is going to be very very difficult thing to understand by the students and if we are agreeing upon that that bohr's theory must be taught well before studying a equation the same lines why not hyperconjugation should be dealt with after conjugation has been properly explained to the students because hyperconjugation is what this is basically conjugation beyond the properly organized recognized conjugation in the most of the molecules so first of all students should be in position to understand what conjugation is where conjugation can be taking place 
and once we are done with that then we can introduce this idea about hyperconjugation which is a kind of pretty weaker form of the conjugation which cannot be happening as extensively as effectively in most of the cases as our usual conjugation is going to take place that should be our uh, idea when we are learning or when we are teaching hyperconjugation it should be following the conjugation but if we look at the some of the other textbooks which we are following across different institutions across different uh, curriculum then see yourself what the situation is when hyperconjugation is appearing in these textbooks and when is the conjugation is appearing for the very first time how can we think of introducing the hyperconjugation thing first and going to the conjugation quite later Th this is not the exhaustive list there's very few examples what we can be familiar with so uh, that should actually be creating a problem to assimilate things very properly for the students if you can take care of that that's not a big issue actually if you can take care of that probably students can be benefited much more easily they can be in position to uh, connect with the hyperconjugation concept much more easily okay moving on we have uh, got the idea about the conjugation first so that is when we are uh, uh, saying that conjugation is going to be related with the delocalization of electrons and if students are able to understand what the delocalization of electron is then we can think about how the delocalization of the sigma bonded electrons or related to the electron can also be done so this the hyperconjugation we can realize if student understand conjugation very well then they can recognize this relatively weaker type of conjugation which can be taking place from the nearby sigma or pi bonds or lone pairs to the empty p orbitals this thing they can connect with very easily if they are very well aware of the concept of conjugation that is the idea actually uh, when i am saying this is the note to the organic chemistry teacher this was the main focus that uh, conjugation uh, should be like hyperconjugation can be very much convincing to the students if they understand the basis of conjugation and the delocalization of electrons going back we are talking about the delocalization of electron that should be the key thing whether we talk about conjugation or we talk about hyperconjugation still if there are some confusion to the students we could take the help of molecular orbital diagrams uh, we'll be dealing with those in the fourth lecture onwards when we'll be uh, talking about the mechanism of the hyperconjugation we'll be coming back to that point so that mot diagrams can also be used to emphasize that when this kind of thing is happening when electron delocalization is taking place actually energy is decreased and that is how increased stability will be there that is the uh, basic idea what we should be uh, taking care of while we are teaching this organic chemistry the hyperconjugation topic and in fact if uh, some sometimes when students start learning by themselves uh, this hyperconjugation concept they uh, find this term quite confusing because if you understand hyper this hyper term we have been using in the chemistry and other and other uh, terms like in the valence bond theory in the chemical bonding or elsewhere hyper actually supposed to be uh, referring to more than or or quite higher quite greater or much more greater basically in many of the cases so if they understand the meaning of conjugation somehow and they apply hyper conjugation as hyper plus conjugation they can be regarding they, they can be understanding this this hyper conjugation thing as abnormally high amount of conjugation or excessive conjugation sometimes they can be calling this as super conjugation but we understand that's not the case the hyper conjugation when we say hyper conjugation this is rather a weaker kind of conjugation which can be taking place beyond what was normally considered to be the case of conjugation so this confusion can be avoided if a student have an idea about when this term was for the first time introduced by mulliken what his idea 
was when this term hyperconjugation was suggested. His idea about the hyperconjugation was that this is the case of conjugation over and beyond the generally recognized case of conjugation. So hyper is over and above, it is much higher, but not to the extent of conjugation. This is higher more than the considered cases like this was the beyond the usual cases which people recognize which people think of that term hyperconjugation was used and he had already emphasized that hyperconjugation in the carbon carbon system is going to be relatively weaker weaker concept weaker electron delocalization weaker stabilizing effect would be coming into picture when hyperconjugation is going to take place when delocalization is taking place because of hyperconjugation then it is less stabilizing effect than the usual conjugation that he has emphasized. Okay, then if we understand this, what was the idea behind hyperconjugation, probably student can avoid confusion. Also, uh, introduction of the sigma pi conjugation was one of the suggestion which was uh, uh, given. So if we uh, refer to conjugation, we basically say the pi pi conjugation, pi p conjugation, n p conjugation, n pi conjugation, those are normal cases of conjugation. When we talk about hyperconjugation, this is going to be the case of sigma pi conjugation. So uh, we can say in case of carbon carbon chains, this is hyperconjugation is basically two smaller delocalizing effect in comparison to conjugation. If you understand that, the confusion which is around the term hyperconjugation can possibly be avoided. One last thing uh, to the what we should be taking care of while teaching this hyperconjugation to the students or while learning this thing is when we are applying these different electronic effects basically in particular when we are applying this for the problem solving skills we need to understand conjugation is having much more charge delocalization effect in comparison to hyperconjugation. So delocalization or conjugation should be given preference more than the hyperconjugation. And then, because hyperconjugation is also involving a delocalization of electron in comparison to the inductive effect, which is a localized change in electron density, hyperconjugation has much more dominating effect in comparison to inductive effect. So, the idea is apply conjugation first, then hyperconjugation, and then inductive effect. If you follow this, most of the problems we can solve without having unwanted confusions. And the idea is uh, simple. This is all about how extensively electrons are delocalized and why they are having this kind of order. This lies in the extent to which these electrons can be delocalized and the proportionately there will be stabilizing effect. We'll be elaborating uh, these all three points when we'll be taking the case of the discussion about the stability of the carbocations. We'll be elaborating this point further. So that's all in this uh, section. We uh, have used these uh, primary references in the discussion of this part one. And these are some of the secondary references what I have referred to. Here we conclude our today's session. Thank you for watching. Next session, we'll be talking about the order, classification and some other terms. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.